I'm Amy, thank you for tuning in. This is my mid-year book freakout tag video and um, first I've got a few updates. I hinted in a previous video that I've had a short story accepted into an anthology and I can now talk about it because it's been announced. Um, the next horror tube anthology edited by Regina St. Clair is called Lurking in the Dark um, and my short werewolf story, yes werewolves not vampires, um, has been accepted into the anthology. It's called Bad Moon Rising, it's about an actor on a werewolf movie set who realises that the movie might be more realistic than it first appears. Um, I'm really excited about it. I've never written about werewolves before, so I hope you enjoy it when the anthology comes out in October. These are the previous anthologies if you're interested in reading in the meantime. We've had Local Haunts, which I've not read yet, but I've heard it's excellent, and Serve Cold, which I have read and really enjoyed, so I'm so excited to be involved in this. I will link to Regina St. Clair's channel in the description, and thanks again, Regina, for choosing my story. My next bit of news, um, a bit of a reminder that Mina and the Slayers comes out on the 1st of September. I'm so excited for people to read it. Um, and I've started updating my website with some information about events that I'll be doing. So for anybody local to Doncaster, I'll be doing an event um, on the 1st of September at Doncaster Waterstones. Um, I'm also going to be doing some a bit later in the year. I've got one in October in Kent. Um, and I've got a couple of bookshop ones um, which are just being finalised now, which is really exciting. And finally, Kasha from Kasha's Book Cemetery has kindly decided to organise a read-along. Um, so in August, she and her viewers will be reading Mina and the Undead. And in September, when Mina and the Slayers comes out, they'll be reading that as well. So if you'd like to get involved, please follow along with Kasha. Um, I'll link to her channel in the description. I'm so pleased at the reception that my books are getting. And I just hope that people really enjoy the second book. Um, so now I will get to the mid-year book free cat tag. I've been really enjoying watching people's mid-year book free cat tag videos. I thought I'd have a go at doing my own and share some of the books I've enjoyed so far this year, the ones I'm looking forward to, and the ones I maybe not enjoyed as much as I hoped. So to begin with, the first book I'm going to talk about is um, the best book I've read so far in 2022, and that is In Every Generation by Kendara Blake. If you are a fan of Buffy or Kendara Blake books um, or vampire books in general, um, it's brilliantly plotted, beautifully written, whether you like Buffy or not, um, it's an enjoyable read, but I think what Kendara Blake does is that for me, as a huge Buffy fan, in case you already know, um, she captures the voice of the characters so well and the feel of the Buffyverse um, and the types of villains that Buffy encounters, so I just think she did a really good job. I absolutely love this one and I can't wait for the next book, which is coming out next year. Next up, we have the best sequel I've read so far in 2022. I was a little bit late to the game with these just because, I don't know, uh, maybe because they're middle grade, just because there's too many books to read. Um, but I read the first one last year and then I read book two and three this year and I just absolutely love the Cassidy Blake books in case you can't tell what they are from the covers uh, by Victoria Schwab as she was writing these. Um, I really like these because they're about Cassidy who can see ghosts after a near-death experience and her parents who are ghost hunters um, for a TV show. Um, one of her parents is a skeptic, one is a believer and each one is set in a really creepy city and they are all cities I've been to and I'm really interested in. So the first book is Edinburgh, the second book is Paris um, and the third is New Orleans which is one of my personal favourites. Um, I'd really recommend these if you're interested in creepy books. Um, they do have a sort of crossover feel to me that I feel like young adult and adult readers would enjoy them as well as the middle grade audience they're intended for. Um, next up we have a new release that I haven't read yet but I want to and that is My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I've been seeing this all over social media, just the premise of it being a romance mixed with a murder mystery really appealed to me. I've been trying to read um, some more light fun books in between the darker things I usually read so I'm hoping that this one will really fit. I'm also trying to get a little bit more into romance so if you have any recommendations on these lines please let me know in the comments. Next we have the most anticipated release for the second half of 2022 and that is Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. Um, it's one of the companion books to the Truly Devious series, I think that's how they're being called. Um, I really enjoyed The Box in the Woods which uses the same characters but isn't the Truly Devious arc and then I think Nine Liars is another story. That one is meant to be a bit of a 90s slasher um, so I really really think I'll enjoy that. Obviously 90s slashers are my thing. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that book set in the Truly Devious universe. I'm often not disappointed by books because I think I'm quite choosy about what I read. I usually know what I like, um, but sadly I was a bit disappointed by The Book of Dust. 
Um, I did enjoy it a lot, and actually by the end I was really invested. But I think the reason I'm slightly in um, the reason I'm slightly disappointed is that Northern Lights was one of my favourite books growing up. I remember my granddad used to buy me the Carnegie Medal award-winning books, um, and I remember the day he took me to W. H. Smith and we picked this out together. So. I think it's wrapped up in a lot of kind of important memories for me this book um and i just i've enjoyed reading it as an adult i've watched it at the theater um i've met philip pullman a couple of times so i really wanted to like this and um, i did like it but i didn't have that same love as the his dark materials trilogy and i think for me it was in the pacing it took quite a while to establish the world and the characters i felt there were some situations where Malcolm went back and forth kind of um, having conversations with people that could have been combined just in my opinion um, however I've heard that the second book is where the pace really picks up I did still really like it so I think that I'm going to continue the trilogy it just wasn't quite what I was looking for next up the biggest surprise now a lot of people have told me including um, Kat Ellis who blurbed this book um, that I would love the inheritance games and I think I went into it with kind of moderate expectations because I try not to get overhyped about books because it invariably leads to disappointment with me. But I absolutely adored it. From the moment I started reading, the voice of the main character is just immediately arresting and I think that the mystery is gripping and twisty and I didn't really know where it was going to go. And I loved the family. She, I don't know whether you know the story of this, but um, just briefly, the main character ends up inheriting huge fortune but she has to live with the family for a year um, of the deceased person's, um, she has to live with the deceased person's family for a year um, and he hasn't given them a huge inheritance like he's given her. Um, so it's very fun. The brothers um, that she has to live with are um, very charming, interesting characters. Um, I absolutely can't wait to read the next book in the series. Next up, we have new favorite author. I'm a little bit late on this band again. Um, I have always enjoyed V Shab's books before, but I think this year, um, I really hit my stride with her books and I, as I mentioned I really enjoy her gothic writing um, I loved this series, I loved um, Gallant um, and I've since read quite a few of the others um, I've read Vicious and Vengeful and I think that the supervillain angle was really interesting to me and, and I also have just recently finished This Savage Song and really liked that and I just think that V. Schwab has a really interesting perspective that whenever I pick up one of her books it doesn't feel like anything I've read before and I think when you read so much it's just a real treat to read a book where it feels like a breath of fresh air so definitely a new favourite and I'm always excited to see what she's going to write next and I think going forward I'll pre-order everything she writes. Next we have newest fictional crush now I'm going to qualify this a little bit I do have a crush on Eric from True Blood. I, I watched the TV show. I really liked Alexander Skarsgård who played Eric. However, I've been reading the books this year with Fictional Hangover Book Club. We've been reading one book a month um, of the Suki Stackhouse mysteries. And I just really like Eric um, in the books. He is the kind of vampire that I'm interested in where they walk that morally gray line where you don't know whether he's going to do something terrible or do something quite redeeming. And I think Suki is trying to figure out how she feels about him as I am as a reader. So Eric is not exactly a new crush, but it's definitely a crush that's been revived by the books. Um, a book, oh, news favorite character. So I'm gonna pick up these books a lot. Um, Cassidy Blake, I think is a brilliant character. She has such agency. She just feels like, I sometimes read middle grade books and I either don't buy the character as a kid or I don't know, I just don't feel as invested by a middle grade character because it's quite a long time since I was that age, sadly. Um, but somehow with Cassidy, I can relate to her. I still really enjoy the books, even though there's quite a big age gap between us. Um, so yes, I think that I'm hoping there'll be more Cassidy Blake books and I will look forward to seeing her as a character as much as the, the book in the whole world. Um, next, we have a book that made me cry. Sadie by Courtney Summers. I don't know whether this would make other people cry. It is about um, a very mysterious girl called Sadie. It's written in the style um, of a podcast and there's mixed media and things like that in it. I think it really got to me because it is about a missing girl and I have a child. Um, so I think sometimes when you have um, a book for me, when I can really relate to it, I think it, it sort of touched that place in me that um, made me feel quite emotional and there were points where I shed a few tears. It is brilliant, it's very dark. Please check the content warnings if you're interested in it. It's a while since I've read it, but there was certainly um, some violence and some unsettling scenes. Um, so please look into those if you're at all interested in this one. Next, we have a book on the opposite end scale, a book that made me happy. 
And again, a bandwagon that I'm late to jumping on, um, Heartstopper. This is one of those books that you probably know, you've probably already read it. Um, I just think really is deserving of the hype. It is so sweet and warm and genuine. The characters are believable, really relatable. I like how it sort of represents their inner worlds really well and how they're feeling about things. And I just think it's beautiful. So definitely one that I'm really enjoying. I'm just trying to save the books now and reading one a month rather than gobbling them all up in one go. Next we have favourite book to movie anticipation I've seen this year. I'm gonna have to cheat on this one because I can't remember watching any. I've been so busy writing and reading that TV and movies have taken a real back seat this year. So thinking about last year, I really enjoyed the Fear Street adaptation. I loved the books in the 90s and I think that the Netflix series captured, or um, trilogy of films I think it was actually, um, captured that feel really really well. I also loved um, the To All The Boys I Loved Before films. Um, I think that they, I haven't read all of Jenny Han's books, but I think they got the feel of those exactly right. They were impeccably cast, um, so warm and so fun and sweet. Um, so a bit of a contrast from Fear Street, but they were two that I really enjoyed. My favourite post or video in this case that I made this year um, is I, made, I did a 101 vampire book recommendations, which I'll link in the description. I think I'm proud of this one because it was so ambitious. I've never mentioned 101 books in a video. I possibly won't again. I thought it was a fun idea to do like a Vampire 101 where I was sharing um, like an introduction to vampires or a way, if you're already a vampire fan like I am, a way to further your reading. Um, so that I really, really enjoyed making that one. Next, the most beautiful book I bought this year. Another few Schwab one, definite theme of this. The Forbidden Planet edition. I know there were various editions of this one. I went with the Forbidden Planet one. I absolutely love the stained edges, but in general, the artwork in this book is just beautiful. I think the artist they chose is amazing. Um, I'll link to his name in the description because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, v Schwab's writing is just really complemented by the gothic design of this book. I really like it when design and um, writing kind of me in one. Um, I think it was really beautifully done in both ways. So books that I hope to read by the end of the year. Um, I've been trying to read more adult romance books, emphasis on the adult. Um, my friend Bella Donna Books on Instagram um, recommended Black Sunshine as a vampire book. Um, so I thought I'll try and give this one a go as soon as I can, but certainly by the end of the year. Next, Kill River. I've been seeing this all over the place um, when people have been doing um, Summerween and things like that. Um, I love Asasha. I haven't read anything by Cameron Rubik. Um, so I'm, I'd like to give this a go. I love the cover. I think he might illustrate the cover as well. Um, I just think it sounds really fun. Love a slasher, so I'm going to try and read this one soon. This is a proof that came by surprise from a publisher. I love it when that happens. Um, Monsters Born and Made. Um, it's a South Asian inspired fantasy debut um, about a girl called Coral, who grew up battling the monsters that live in the surrounding seas, but it didn't prepare her to face the cunning cruelty of the ruling elite. I think this sounds really good, like it deals with a lot of interesting and important subjects in the fantasy context. I've been trying to read a bit more fantasy because I've really enjoyed books like Beasts of Prey um, by Ayanna Gray, so I think that this um, will hopefully be a really, really good read. And next, Carmilla. I feel like it has been on every single TBR that I've made this year. For whatever reason, I think because it's quite far from being a new release, um, I just haven't got to it and I keep bumping it for books that have just come out. So it's really short, I've got no excuses. It's meant to be the book that inspired Dracula. So I will, I'm vouching for myself. I will read this by the end of the year. I've also got really behind with Karen McManus's books. I read the first, maybe two or three of them, really enjoyed them, but haven't picked up the rest. So I got this one um, cause she was appearing at Yelk. Um, I didn't manage to get my copy signed. I got a copy signed for a friend. Um, I only took one copy with me. Um, but having met Karen, she was really lovely. Um, I admire her and I admire her books. So I'm going to try and read her back catalogue this year. So you'll probably see some more of these in my TBRs. And that is it. I hope you've enjoyed that video and it's given you a little insight into the things that I have been reading and I'm excited to read um, later in the year. Thank you so much for watching um, and I hope you will like and subscribe as usual. It really helps. Thanks very much. Bye.